Hi everyone. Uh, in today's video, we are going to start to focus the implementation on the detector app. Since in the last classes, we have done some small changes on the detector API itself. Uh, now the plan is to make the detector app production ready. In today's video, we will be focusing on uh, making the, the compilation of the detector app into native code. So we're going to do a native compilation using GraalVM. So let's start. Uh, so first thing you have to do is, so I hope you have followed uh, my video, uh, my first video where we where we do the setup of the environment. So you use the JD, you install the JDK using ESDF. I hope you have done that. Why? Uh, because we have to install the JDK version uh, from the Graal VM itself because it has some extra extra libraries that we need to use to do the, the native compilation. So if you have installed it uh, using like like using the normal JVM, the normal JDK, I can as you can see here, I have Java dash dash version. So, uh, but if you want to install the version from uh, from Graal VM, you can come here and. ESDF list all Java. Then you can do a grab, pipe grab, uh, grow, grow VM. Then you see there are like different types of different version, different versions here. So in my case, uh, what I have is I already have this installed. So ESDF list Java. And you see that I have Oracle Grow VM 20 version 21. So what I'm going to do is local java and the version which i want to use now if i do a java dash dash version you see that i have this here so the java la, 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 environment grow vm everything so let me do one small thing before so just just to understand why do we have to do that so if we have if you come here and we say let's use the open jdk 21 and now we are going to uh, Cradle native compile, it will fail because it, it will ex it will expect some some small binaries which are not present on the on the Open JDK itself. Uh, so this means this probably means that JDK app is in a Gra 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 VM distribution. So let's again point or configure our our uh, JDK to, to to use the Gra VM JDK. And now let's try to run this again. So Gradle uh, Gradle Clean, clean native compile. It will take some time, right? Because it's going to compile our code to binary. Um, let's wait a bit. Then, as soon as this is done, we are going to try to run the application. Let's first ensure that our detector app is running. So let's start that here. Okay. Uh, yes, it's up and running. So let's do a test first here. Let's come here to our application and let's run. And let's see how, how long our application takes to start. So stop. So if you check here, the application took almost one second to start, right? And the process took a bit more. Good. So uh, still doing the completion. Um, so this, as you can imagine, this takes some time, right? Especially like the bigger the application is, the, the longer it takes. Uh, but first thing, so that's, that was the easy setup, but you see that we, we find some issues here. And I'm just going to, to explain you what the problem is exactly. Let's check one thing uh, here. Let's check the logic from our repository itself. We have it here. So we're basically going to make up HTTP call and here everything's fine. So now we go to build uh, native and native compile and then we have the detector app. Let's try to run. Boom, we have a problem. So uh, when you check the error, the, error, the logs, uh, you see that there's no HTTP message converter. So basically, again, we have we already had this problem before. We don't, or similar to this one, we don't have like Jackson doesn't know or yeah, REST REST client doesn't know how to how to parse uh, the the object detection registration. Uh, if you want, please you can pause the video and can you can try to debug yourself and see if you find the problem. 
Um, otherwise, I'm just going to explain what the problem is. Uh, so, if you think about it, when we are using like, in, if you go to the code and we come here and say, let's create, for example, like how how you how do you uh, serialize an object using Jackson? If you do it by by hand, you basically come, for example, to create an object mapper, right? It's just an example of code, okay? Mapper. So you create an object mapper, and then you can come here, for example, and mapper dot uh, write value as string or value as byte and then here you create you pass your object so have you ever asked yourself how object mapper or how jackson uh, understands how this has to be uh, parsed so uh, it doesn't know how to like so there, there are some some magic going behind right so there's some discoveries to be done uh, so some like uh, uh, reflection that's happening here so there is there are some some known problems when using raw VM. Uh, not problems, yeah, some problems because this is something which uh, Spring will do on on the runtime. So when you do not Spring, sorry, the Jackson. So when you have the object mapper and then you do a, like write value as a string, whatever type it is, whatever like type of the object which you have, this discovery is going to be happening on the runtime. So the runtime doing the duplicate write duplication is running. This is going to find what kind of fields does, does this object has and how to parse them, how to serialize them, sorry, that's the best word. So uh, since we are trying to, to compile to, na na like to native code, we need to somehow uh, explain, because like natively it's not going to use reflection, right? It's a native code, it's going to run on the machine itself, it's not Java code. So it needs to understand how this parsing, how this serialization is going to be done. Uh, since we are using Spring uh, here, there there are some some ways for us to do that. There is one thing called hint runtime hint. So uh, let me show you. Import runtime hint hints. So this here basically is a way for you when you're when you're using the the, the Spring to compile natively. This 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 hints they are going to they are going to be hints to the to the Graal VM or to the compiler. It's going to compile your, your code to native. Let me show you by like with, with the code so you, can, you may most probably understand it better. So let's create a class called detector uh, runtime runtime hints. This is something, th those hints is something you can do by JSON. You can create the JSON. Uh, so if you go to GraalVM documentation, you can create the JSON, which you create, which you define the hints there. So uh, GraalVM knows like how to do some stuff, which was supposed to be done on the runtime. And you are basically going to tell uh, GraalVM what to do. You know when this when like when the when it's the compilation is happening, so here we can do via classes as well. So let's create a class detector runtime hints. This is going to implement uh, runtime uh, hints registrar. And here in this class, in this method, you can add hints to the compilation. For example, you can add hints uh, hints re regarding the serialization, the proxies, because you know Spring create proxies uh, on the runtime uh, for some things. Resources, if you have external like files which you want to, to also, uh, which are done on the runtime, you also want to do some magic here. Reflection and everything. In our case, we are going to basically hint like add some hints regarding the serialization. So basically, you come to serialization and you do a call the re register type. So you're going to register a type which, which instead of being uh, evaluated or like understood uh, on the runtime, is going to be done on the compilation time. So when the, 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 the code is being compiled, the structure of this class on how to understand and how to, how to serialize this an object of this class, this is going to be done on the compilation itself. And what's the type which we want to use is detection registration. But if you see here as well, this is also private record. So let's make it public. Otherwise, we cannot access it from here. So we do a uh, external, no, not external, the class is this one, detection registration, class. And what else do we have to do? This is, yeah. And also the, the registration needs to implement serial, serializable. Um, okay, nothing else. And here we need to import the runtime, right? So detector runtime hints class. All fine. Now let's go again and let's 
again uh, compile our code natively. So that's a very important thing. So for example, let's say if you're using, so this is something which may take some time, especially if you start to use some external libraries or external frameworks, you need to Google quite some, some time. So for my case, I had to Google a bit because I wasn't, it took me like some minutes to understand what the problem was. And so you need to Google it, especially if you have like, like big frameworks or big lab, big, big frameworks or libraries which are using, they may be using a uh, reflection or proxy or serialization or something under the hood, which is, which happens on the runtime. But uh, for you, at least, uh, like a hint which I can give you is every time you think about some logic which may happen, uh, or like especially some, some crazy logic like reflection or something or proxy like this, which may be happening on the runtime, uh, always think that, like, I'll always think about hints. Like, if if this is happening on the runtime and I'm compiled, compiling this to a native code, when this magic is going to happen? Because native code is not is not is not going to be doing those magics for you on uh, on the runtime, right? So, this needs to be thought, and uh, that's a hint for you to always think about it. Okay, so. Yeah, there's a, there's an extra effort for this when you're trying to to to, to uh, build things uh, natively, okay? But that's that's in our case, this, the detector is not going to be a big app. We are not going to be using crazy frameworks itself, so um, that's not a big deal. So that's the small thing we have which we had to do so far. Okay, now let's go and run the application. You now you see that the application started pretty quickly. So zero zero forty eight milliseconds uh, or 48 milliseconds yeah so you see the application is running now okay that's exactly what we wanted so i think that's it uh, for today uh, so next class we, next video we are going to be doing something else i'm going to be presenting to you some of the 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 criteria for me to uh, to identify one application or at least one desktop application to be production ready or our application to be to, to be production ready and then on the next videos we are going to be working on those features uh, to make the application as we want so we we will stop to focus on it at, as soon as this is ready and then we are going to be focusing again on the APIs to imp to implement the logic to really understand the detection and do all the things that we have discussed on the on the on the first video which I explained the whole. Uh, features which we're going to, to implement on this platform okay i think that's it so um hope you liked it uh, see you in the next video bye bye